Compañeros, ¿cómo estamos? Buenas tardes, buenos días todavía. ¿Cómo están? Aquí estamos con... Es un honor y placer estar con el señor Roy Alexander, una leyenda viviente. Um, también aquí estamos con mi amigo... Quiero dar gracias a mi amigo Brent Easterling, que me hizo la, el favor de conseguirme esta entrevista. Uh, guys, I'm here uh, with a living legend. Mr. Ray Alexander, um, I want to thank uh, my friend Brent Easterling from L&L Game Farm who made this possible without him and his mom, uh, it wouldn't have been possible. And here's a living legend, Mr. Ray Alexander, how are you, sir? Good. It's an honor, honor to be here with you. Thank you very much. Um, you are um, one of the living legends of, of uh, Cockfighting. Thank you so much, sir. Um, um, les comparto, compañeros, que por favor comenten y por favor este, uh, comparten este video ahorita para que le llegue a más gente posible. Ray, um, where are you from, Ray? Uh, I was raised in Birmingham, Alabama, Irondale, Alabama. Uh, and we, I was raised poor and anybody can be raised. That we didn't have no running water, we didn't have no bathroom, we had nothing in our own home. And uh till I was senior in high school. Oh wow. And we began to, my daddy would come out of the war then and uh he began to make a little money and I went from there. And when I was at that chicken fight there I I I'll show you the trophy in there. That boy found it for me. I, my wife sold it out there in a garbage can and and he, and he was digging through some stuff and found it. Curly Kelso Memorial, the more, first time they ever had a memorial. What year was that? 1954. Wow. Where at? Sunset, Louisiana. Okay. You won that? Yeah, I won it by myself, soloed it. So, what did you fight that? What did you fight in uh, that time? You know, I don't really know. I just know I was broke and didn't have no much money, so I had to have somebody to put my money up. Dice Eduardo que él nació en, en, en Alabama, que era muy, era muy pobre y que jugó un derby en 1954, el, el memorio de Kelson, y lo ganó solo. Y que no tiene dinero para la entrada y alguien puso la entrada. Um, so, how did, um, ¿Cómo fue que empezaste con los gallos? ¿Cómo well, empezaste con los roosters? Bueno, uh, mi uncle we used to like to fight roosters and I would drive him in the woods and I started to fool with him and I got to like him. Dice que empezó con un tío de él, le gustaban los gallos de pelea y empezó a hasta con su tío. So when was the first time, the first time you actually held a rooster? I was about 12 years old. Le pregunto que cuando fue la primera vez que que tuvo un gallo. Y, uh, ¿Cuándo fue la, la primera vez que empezaste sinceramente a, 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 a criar gallos? So when did you start getting serious about raising chickens, or how did you get into that? Well, I was in uh, Harold Brown, dead now, mm -hmm. but he, uh, somebody said that uh, that's Harold Brown or out there in the woods, but he's out there looking for some chickens they stole from him, and so. I said, I'd go over and talk to him. I went over and talked to him. He said, he got to talk to him. He said, you want to go to a cockfight? I said, I'll take you. Que una vez estaba en una, una jugada y que conoció, le dijeron que había, estaba Harold Brown ahí. Y se le arrimó y le preguntó este, que le gustaban los gallos. Y, ah, pues, vamos para allá. So he took you to his farm? He took me to his farm and took me out to the blocks of Mississippi to cockfight. Okay. And, uh, you were 12 then? I was about 12 years old. Que conoció a Harold Brown cuando tenía 12 años. So he would be your mentor? He, he knows more about taking than anybody I ever know. Harold Brown did. Dice que Harold Brown era uno de los gallos que, que sabía más de gallos que cualquier otra persona. Well, he was just had one problem. He was so, too, so lazy to work. Dice que el, el problema que tenía que era que era muy huevón. But he knows chicken better than anybody. He taught me everything, and everything he taught me that you can't beat it. It's exactly the way that he told me. He taught it. Dice que él fue que le enseñó todo lo de los gallos. With uh, 
So what was your first line of chickens you had, sir? From the, all your lines come from Harold Brown originally? Come from Harold, I could get what I wanted from him, and he had top notch chickens back then. Dice que la mayoría de los uh, originalmente llegaron de Harold Brown. Um, so what were the first lines you had from Harold? Uh, hatches. From he got he could get a chicken from Ted McLean. He got three cocks from Ted McLean. Nobody else could get a cock from Ted McLean back then. Dice que él consiguió unos unos McLeans de de Harold Brown que los regaló directamente de Ted McLean. Que en ese tiempo nadie podía agarrar los de McLean de Ted McLean. So how, he he was a good friends with Ted McLean. He he could get a chicken from him. He got three different cocks from him. Okay. And uh, he could talk. He he could he could uh, make you think black is white. <laughs> wow! <laughs> but uh, he he that's the type of person he was. But he knew chickens. He knew chickens. Yeah, he he could do it, but he was so lazy he wouldn't do it. You think he was a huevoncito que que sabía de pocas pero era huevoncito. That was his downfall. I mean, it's a downfall. He he hired me. I mean, he, I'd have to do all the work. He he, he ain't gonna, he ain't gonna work in a pie factory. Harold would do nothing. <laughs> but if he'd had but Curtis Blackwell and him went in partners, and Curtis was right reverse. Dice que um, Harold Brown se juntó con Curtis Blackwell, y que Curtis Blackwell era muy trabajador. So that made a difference in that partnership. Yeah, because Curtis would work. Okay. And do what Harold told him. But Curtis didn't know anything about chickens. He couldn't handle. He couldn't do nothing. Que dice que Curtis era muy trabajador, pero no sabía nada de gallos. So the the the. So um, Harold Brown had that nick of knowing chickens, right? He knows chickens good as anybody I ever been around. Still, what I do today is what what he did, showed me the first time. Oh wow! I had a hole a rooster. And I had a pit a rooster. I did followed him. All the way through. Wow. Had a stremel rooster. Dice que Harold Brown enseñó todo lo que sabía, cómo cómo agarrar un gallo, cómo cuidar un gallo, cómo entrenar un gallo, cómo escrutar un gallo. Um, you've been all over the world, huh, Ray? Yes. If, where have you been to? Where have you fought chickens at? Uh, the Philippines was, uh, uh, this guy, Duke Halsey, worked for the man in the Philippines. And uh, so, he quit when this other guy took off, took control over there at Marcus. Uh, well, that Harold had to uh, just do whatever they told him then because this guy was in charge of it uh, in the Philippines. And so he called, he, he wanted to find somebody over here that could win. Who, who was that? The, the... Um, George Arnato. Okay. It was just nice. He went on to Arnetta Center. Que uh, Arnetta le habló que quiera gallos. That's where they fight the thrill yeah. of Manila now. Right, the slasher. Yeah, that's the biggest fight in the world. So when's the first time you went to the Philippines? When fue la primera vez que fuiste a Philippines? Well, about 60-something. En el 60 fue a las Filipinas. They got me out there, and I had one several derbies in a row there, and so they got How me many? several in, in a row. Okay. So he, he told that boy to come over here and find the best chicken man over here. Que, que la raneta le preguntó a un amigo que, que le contara mejor gallero de todos Estados Unidos, y, and they came to you. Yeah, he came to me, and so I said, uh, well, at that time, uh, they, the, uh, the police come out to my house, and uh, I thought they were going to buy, trying to buy chickens, and uh, I was trying to sell them some chickens, and. So he invited me, could they come in my house? I said, yeah, come on in. And when they got in there, they threw them badges on me. And so bags? Ba baggage, they're ba uh, badges. Po bag, police bags. Yeah. And they threw them bags on me and said, uh, do you know this man? Well, I am recording, talking to a mob people out there in Vegas. <laughs> and I, they thought they were mob people? All the mob people, yeah, that's who, who I was talking to. Okay, here in in the Philippines or in the, in, uh, in uh, Vegas. Oh wait, wait, wait! So I lost you there. So you were in Vegas. Yeah, I mean uh, the mob people from there, but I'm talking to them on the phone because back then I was betting on football. 
Aunque que dice que... So I'm talking to all them people, and so they said, uh, we don't want you, we want you to identify them voices. And I said, well, I don't, I'm not going to identify them voices. Y es que uno tuvo un problema con, con la mafia que, que estaba pasando en, en juegos de fútbol y que llegó la policía con él y que querían que él hablara, que quiere eran las ventas en, en el teléfono. So the mob people got word when to that I wasn't going to talk. Right. And that's when I went to the Philippines because they told me, invited me to come over, so I was going to get away from that. They said that they, they spun out of my drive, the police did, and then said, we'll invite you, you'll be invited to Vegas and you'll talk. We'll put you on the stand. So you took off to the Philippines? I took off to the Philippines. Dice que por eso se fue para las Filipinas porque la policía llegó a su casa preguntando por unos mafiosos porque él jugaba en los juegos de fútbol y querían que les ayudara con él y no se quiso, no quiso ayudarles y se fue para las Filipinas. That was the first time you went over there? Yeah. How'd you do? Won it. You won the derby. One of the, one of the biggest derbies there was at that time. They, uh, they put me out there in the toughest competition right off the bat. And uh, they uh, would come back. I had won, I won it by myself. And uh, they said, Ray, you have put the Thunder back in the Thunderbird. He, he fought in the Thunderbird. What, what year was that? It was probably 60 something. Que en el año 66 fue a las Filipinas y ganó el derby más grande que ya con la competencia más dura. What did you fight back then? I, you know, I can't remember. I think it was roundheads. Que jugó cartas de rondas. Um, so you used to have the same roundheads you did 40, yeah, 50 years ago? Yeah, I've had them roundheads for all my life. Que tiene esos roundheads de toda su vida. What, what are they? Lacy roundheads. Son lacy roundheads. Yeah, uh, they were the best chickens they were uh, and that I know of at that time. Dice que... Eran los mejores gallos que he conocido. Smart, aggressive. Yeah, well, they, well, in the meantime, Mr. Griffin come told me, he said, uh, Ray, you have won this derby down here. And he said, you ain't have nothing. And it sort of hurt my feelings. And, and uh, he said, uh, we, we're too old, me and my brother. He said, if you'll train the show for us, we'll appreciate it. Who was that? Mr. Griffin. Que el señor Griffin le pidió que, que le cuidaran los gallos. And they were the roundheads? They, they were the clares. Okay. So... Unos claretes. He, he, uh... I trained to show a rooster for him, and so he said, when you spar them, you let me know how they are. And I called him, I said, after I spar them, I said, Mr. Griffin, we won't want to fight these things. These things have no count. <laughs> Dice que el Griffin le dio los clarietes y para cuidarlos. <laughs> yeah, I really believed it. Y que le preguntó, este, pues tópalos y te llevas, los cuídalos y le preguntó, ¿cómo van los rayos? No, pues no, con esos rayos no ganamos ni una p***. And then what happened? We won it eight straight. Oh, you won the derby with the clarets. With the clarets, eight straight. Y que ganó los ocho clarets. We're like, uh, counting the money up. And I took so he said, what is it you don't like about my chickens now, right? I said, well, I still don't like him chicken. He said, what is it you don't like about him? I said, because well, we're always standing there and the opponent's coming at us. And he shook me. He, could, he was old, but he could shake me. He shook me. He said, I don't want my rooster to rush into something. He don't always rush into it. Well, I didn't understand it. Yeah, so yeah, I'm Mac, yeah. Mac, Mac, Mac Ray, when they told me to come over, well, I went to Mac Ray. He had some blacks that whooped everybody. Well, um, dice que los clarets que ganaron el derby ocho al hilo y le dijo Griffiths por qué no le gustaron y dijo que porque he knows Mr. Griffin he, nobody could whoop him porque se mataba he won more derbies than anybody I've ever seen and they stayed on the line all the time they wouldn't go in they just wait one to come to them and they'd kill him que los gallos siempre se quedaban en la línea nunca se iban al otro gallo and you like that you like the Russian kind of type of rooster right back then I did I like an aggressive type not anymore no no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that guy was there and Duke and uh, Richard Bates was in, uh, and Joe Gould called me and said, look, said, uh, they're not going to let you train no roosters out there. said, uh, the best chicken man in the world, they're working for you right now. They had some to be shot by the firing squad. And, uh, go ahead. No, go ahead, buddy. Okay, well, so he was trying to be shot by the firing squad. And uh, so uh, there's two of them, and there's a Kino, the other one, that come to be president later on. 
his wife did, but it killed him coming down there. And he said, how come the, uh, George, I heard him tell him, and said, well, why they ain't killed him? And he said, he won't never kill him. He's too smart. <laughs> he'll, he'll use him and uh, he'll let him come to America and he'll teach school. So he started Harvard. Oh, wow. So that was the toughest school it was, and, and he was a teacher there. Esteem to Paco, Paco was his boy's name, it was working for George at the White House. Okay. Where George lived then. But he knew more about chicken than anybody I ever been around. Hmm. And uh, I, so he told me we're sparring some blacks. Who was? We were we sparring roosters that day. I had some blacks. You had some blacks? I got some from Mike Ray. Okay. And he they whooped everybody in Hawaii and all. And que estaba un día, um, estaba topando unos prietos que eran muy muy ganadores de Ray. Yeah, that's what, uh, but then uh, we're sparring in black, so I'd see him tell them boys to take the rooster back and put him in a place that they don't know fight chickens there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know what the hell's going on. Them, them blacks whoop everybody in California. The blacks? The blacks. Okay, and they were from you? Yeah, no, from Mac William McRae. Ah, was, eran de William McRae sus prietos. Yeah, he, he was a hell of a chicken man. Y que estaban ganando en todas partes, en California, en todas partes. And you got those two? Yeah, I, I got them to take to the Philippines because I know them Clarence wasn't be no counting that long now. I didn't know what a long I was. You come in and sparring blacks against black, and they just sweeping the country, town out with people. So here they come with two Clarence against each other. I said, oh God. They ain't gonna like this. <laughs> que, que los prietos topaban los prietos y, y se llevan uno contra uno y los claretes topó uno, topó dos, dos claretes y, y so you let them go and what happened? Well, because they all, they waited and, 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 and you, you try to hit him, he'd be gone and he tried to hit you and you'd be gone so they just couldn't hit each other. Que nunca se peleaban, nunca se peleaban los estos claretes. And uh, so, but I said, look, uh, them blacks are the best chickens in the country. They whoop everybody in uh, California and Hawaii and everywhere. He said, they, they might be pretty good roosters, right? But over here, they won't. In the Philippines? In the Philippines. And did, did you take them over there? Yeah, I had, I had, I took 20. And how did you do with the blacks? 50%, like he told me. Ah, dice que los, los pretos eran muy simosos. Y, y si iban, aquí en Estados Unidos jugaban muy bien, pero en las Filipinas ganaron 50-50. And them Clarets were probably 90% winners, right? He told me, he said, you win 95% with them Clarets. That's kind of, hit, and hit, and it couldn't hit each other. So right now, in the actual day, do you like a Russian rooster or do you like a, a I like I like the one that waits. Le pregunto que si, eh, ahorita en el, en el día actual, que le gusta a gallos que, que son encimosos o gallos que se esperan en la línea, dice que... The people in the Philippines know that. I didn't know that. I thought you went and went upside down, shaking or that. And I uh, found out later they were right and I was wrong. Wow. So right now, actual day right now, what kind of lines do you have, Mr. Ray? Well, I got them cl clarets. And the same clarets you had back then? Got, I got them from Mr. Griffin. Goes, when he died right after we started fighting together, he died. And he could give me all these chickens. Cuando se, se, se murió Griffith, le regaló todos los clarets. What, just got the clarets and that's it from him? Yeah, that's all he had. That's all he had? Yeah. Oh, and wow. they called them Griffin clarets. Que se llamaban Griffin clarets. And you still got the same clarets? Yeah. And they still the same way? They won't go in. Okay. They'll wait for you. Okay. And we'd be fighting in the Philippines and we'd drop, have to drop the rooster. And uh, nobody would go in. The opponent wouldn't go in either. He'd sit there and you had to pick them up and put them closer. And finally, he come and said, Ray, is your rooster going to go in? I said, no, my <laughs> going nowhere. Dice que en las Filipinas se estaban los gallos y que se quedaban las líneas y ahí se quedaban todos, se un buen rato. They come white leg? Whites and yeah, they come yellow too. They, they could be in pata blanca and pata maria. But uh, those were the best chickens it's ever been in the world. Mm -hmm. 
Mr. Griffin knows more about chicken than anybody. Okay, right? I think one of the guys in, in the mundo para él. Eso es claret. Eso es claret. You still got them? You, get, you still got them the same? Yeah. Que todavía tiene estos. How much do you sell a trio for right now? Oh, uh, I get a thousand dollars a trio. Ahora eh, lo, los vende a mil dólares por trio. Um, and cross tax. Cross tax. Cross. Cross tax. Oh, I got them crossed around. It's like. Uh, I, I, I had the rooster, Mr. Griffins, and uh, I kept waiting to find him, and so they fi I finally decided to find him, and I went to Orlando. No, it's it's it finished a lot yet. Sunset. Okay. So I took him down there. So they was uh, they bet me a lot of money on that fight, and, and I couldn't cover it. Them people. Que, un, que jugó un clarete ya en Sunset. And uh, we put them up, trying to follow them. So they wanted to fight so much money, I couldn't, then I couldn't afford it. And uh, when we turned them loose, the track just devoured them. Okay. You find them in the spur? I find them in the spur. Okay. Well, um, le voy a preguntar que de, de cuál arma le gusta más. When it was legal back here, or, or if you had a choice, what would you rather fight? Spur, short knife, or long knife? Yeah, it didn't matter. That ain't no difference in that, I think. Uh, no difference in that, a good rooster's good in any of it. I'd just take what I had. Que un buen gallo puede jugar en cualquier arma para él. Whatever they're going to fight, I'd fight it too. Now, um, Mr. Alexander, uh, le voy a preguntar que es mejor, la casta para él o el corte. What's more important to you, Mr. Alexander? Um, um, cutting. Cutting or, or gameness? Cutting. Corte, para él, el corte más importante. If you can't cut, you can't win nothing, nowhere. Que si no puedes cortar, no puedes ganar ni una parte. And Griffin Stickin could cut. They'd, they'd have hit you one time, that key. So what that boy done, now listen to this. I'll tell you something, what happened, how stupid I was. So this boy, tell, they couldn't nobody in there speak English. I mean, everybody in there can speak English. Where, the Philippines? In the Philippines, when it was sparring the rooster. And uh, so they're talking at the gala. And uh, they come to approach me. I said, look, this is all the chickens I had when y'all called me to come over here. They said, no, you don't understand, right? I said, these are the kind of chickens we dream about. Dice que fue a las Filipinas y que sacó los claretes y que los topaba. Y que ellos estaban empezando a hablar en, 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 en filipino y que le, y Ray les dijo, ¿sabes qué? Pues una disculpa, es, es todo lo que yo tengo. Y dijo, no, 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 Ray, si es lo que queremos, como ellos que se queden en la línea, está perfecto. So they, they said, this is what we're dreaming about. That's what they said, that's the kind of chicken we dream about. But uh, he said, look, George is in the movie business, that we'll put it on the film, speed, uh, speed film, and slow it down, where you can see it. Okay. The fight actually would go to dinner. Right. So we went to dinner and he, he, he put it on the speed film up there and uh, that Clark would hand that other in the wing. He'd take it back and that other would shake in front of him and that Griffin would stop it. That Clark had it right on the kitty kitty every time. Wow. And uh, I said, God damn, no wonder that man whooped me so many times. But uh, you seen him fight. You the couldn't. You couldn't he won more dirt than anybody. The best chickens I know of as far as cutting. Cut. Are they the ones that you, that you, that you, that you, that you, that you daddy has? Sam Claret. Griffin Claret, he got it from Blondie. Yeah, I got him from Mr. Griffin. Mm -hmm. I worked for him. You think the papa of Brent is the most Claret that he um, But I didn't think there was no count. Because they stayed on the line. Yeah, they so wouldn't go in. Yeah, they were the best thing you had. And I tell you, I met Jumper, and he had a big hatch cop, and would come in, and they're building them up. So he's pecking mine. Mine's turning his head, and turning his head, and he's picking. He won't build up. Mine won't. Jumper, he never built over a hundred in his life on a chicken. He went over and told his bet, said the Ray, I, Ray's chicken's picking run off. I said, bet me a thousand of them. Yo sé que una vez estaba contra Jumper y estaba, estaba, yo fue una pelea contra él y estaban chillando el gallo y el clarete de Don Oye Alexander no, no, no picaba y era la pelea era contra Jumper y que Jumper nunca jugó una pelea más de 100 dólares y que cuando vio ese Jumper, este Dink, este Jumper, 
Este, dijo, ¿sabes qué jugaban mil dólares en la pelea? And what happened, sir? Well, we turned him loose and mine dodged him and killed him. And uh, <laughs> jump, Jumper about to have the heart attack out there. <laughs> so I had to get Doc Robinson in there to control him. Oh, really? Yeah, he done find it. He done bet, <laughs> bet the thousand. He had a right hand touch over his throat run off. I uh, didn't bet a thousand on it. <laughs> he never bet down his life. I said, that might be a sixth time I thought this rooster. <laughs> Dice que, que el gallo clarete de los peros y se fue por un lado y que le dio un tiro y que, y que este jumper casi le dio un ataque de corazón. Tuvo que entrar un motor para que lo controlara. <laughs> he wasn't scared of that rooster. He, he just didn't want that rooster biting on him. And uh, he's turning his head over and he looked like he's fixing to run off. But... When I turned him loose, that Odin come at him and he dived him and there he laid. And uh, I got Doc Robinson in there to get him under control because Jumper was a good guy, you know. Yeah, he was a good breeder. Yeah, he was, he was a good man. He said that Jumper was a very good creator and a very good man. Who do you look up to, I mean, back then? Blondie. He said, who was your mentor? He said, Blondie Rowling? How come? Well, he learned from Mr. Griffin. Que le aprendió de Griffith? Joe Gould, they sent Paul Gould, sent Joe Gould down to Blondie's to learn. Que mandaron a Joe Gould con Blondie a aprender como, how, how to raise chickens and, and, uh, and everything. Just stay down there. Paul Gould had a, was a lot, had a lot of money. Okay. So he sent his brother, he sent his brother down there. Joe Gould. Joe Gould. And so Joe Good come back. Hell, you couldn't whoop Joe Good after that. He had them graves, and he whooped everybody. Okay, Joe Good, and I'm just gonna graze. I got a question. Um, you have ACOs too, right? Yeah. The pretty people that get ACOs, they don't know so on. Where they, they come from? Bulls, Bobby Bulls. Bobby Bulls. Because there's, there's an old rumor. I mean, everybody has a story on. on they look at all. Everyone tiene esa historia de en el internet que que Bobby Bulls a nadie dejó de tener gallos. Ahora te lo voy a preguntar a él. Um. Everybody says that, you know, Bobby Bowles never sold any chickens to anybody. No, he wouldn't sell a chicken to nobody. But you got him? No. Not direct. This guy worked uh, with Bobby, Bobby Bowles. They fought together. They moved around, and, and he would be with Bobby Bowles. Okay. Well, he told he called him up and said, I want you to come out to my house and uh, put all the chickens in the ground. We're going to kill them all. Bobby said that? That's what he told me. Dice que él era amigo de un amigo de Bobby que jugaban juntos y que le hablaron que a ese señor que fuera a la casa porque iban a matar todos los gallos y enterrarlos. So then what happened? Well, he told him to come out there and they're going to kill them all. Right. So he said that, while they're going through there, he said, now if you want to take something home, play with it. Take it home with you. Que le dijo a ese señor, what was his name? What was his name then? I'm not sure. I like to ask my friend. Okay. Called my friend called me and told me, he said, look, um, he didn't like eight seals. He hated them. Bobby's friend? Yeah. No. Harold Babcock. Okay. He he picked from me a lot of times and stuff. So he, he told me, he said, uh, uh, come by and get the, get these chickens. He said, I don't want them. said, this guy's asked me to take him home. Right? Oh, so, so Bobby's partner told him to go to the house and, 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 and take whatever he wanted, right? Yeah. And so he, he took him home. He took them roosters home, a trio. Okay. And so he, Harold come by there, and that guy was trying to give him to Harold. He, the, he was sick. Que el amigo de, de, de Bobby Boss, este, fue por unos gallos antes que, que Bobby Boss mató todos los gallos y que se los dio a, a otro amigo. And that guy called you? Yeah. And he don't want to know if I'd take them. And he said, I don't like a seals. He said, I know you've had good luck with them, a seals. And I said, yeah, I'll take them. He came to you? He just gave them to him. Do you know the story why Bobby Bulls um, killed everything? Yeah. Why did he, he do that? He was sick. About the, he died after that, too. But he didn't want anybody to have the roots or Yeah, he, he killed them all. Why? He, he, just, he was that type of person. He said that because Bobby Bowles killed all the dogs, he said that he was like that. He said that he didn't want anyone to have them. So the only person that got those Bobby Bowles was that guy. He got them. He, was, took, he took what he wanted. And I thank him must have took the Gamersons to, 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 to
something was real game because I fought him out of his daddy's pit. And uh, we won one and uh, lost two. No, we lost one and won one. And then the guy was, was fighting for the money, and I met him with the other one. And he flattened me right off the bat. This guy was. Dice que jugó dos asilos, luego, luego, que uno lo ganó, uno perdió, y que uno lo, lo, le sacaron las patas. And then, he, he was going for six straight, and he was really fighting good. But he just right off the bat, he flattened me. But uh, I didn't take the rooster out. I said, I'm just going to see, how, see what he can how gang it can be. Shit, ten minutes later, he's up and done whooping that other guy's ass. Que diez minutos así sin patas le, le, le ganó la pelea. And you saw, that's where you saw that real game? I saw how game he was. Somebody told, Brett, who's that fight he fought against? That five hour fight? Or? You remember when we was at Sunset and Scott fought yours in the short now? Yeah, I thought. And that, that fight back there in the draft thing went for about three and a half. Five hours and 45 minutes. Que jugó de 5 horas con 45 minutos en spur, uh, short en la mexicana. Short, uh, what were you fighting that day? What kind of rooster was he? It was a hatch rooster. Mm -hmm. Hatch. What kind of hatch? Uh, it was something I got from Harold. You still got him? Yeah. Que jugó un hatch y que duró 5 horas 45 minutos. You were there, Brent, right? For I was that fight. After Drag Pit watching Scott Pitt, he didn't have no head left or nothing. <laughs> they asked for the worst. Where Scott was, after the fight was over, I said, I'd look in the bathroom for it. Scott estaba estando para él. Scott, who? Scott here? Scott here, yeah. Scott here, yeah. Scott here, yeah. So you were behind. Brent said you were behind 2200, right? Oh, yeah. He, that, the other guy was uh, fighting damn good. Que el que iba contra, estaba 20 a 100, ganó perdido. So five hours, and, five hours and 45 minutes in the track pit. Yeah. Que cinco horas, 45 minutes in the... In, 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 in I was against Sammy. I yeah, the short man. Yeah, against Sammy short man. Ramsey? Yeah. Sammy Farella. I mean, Sammy L. Ramsey. 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 Yeah. Sammy Ramsey. He has, he, he knows about chickens. And he done right in reverse what most people would do. He would, uh, everybody would get there on the ground and would, Harold, me and Harold were walking around out there. And Harold said, well, that man won't want to fight. And I said, that damn man wins a lot of damn fights down here. Who uh, Sammy Hunt? Sammy. And he was, he was, he was, he'd haul them from North Carolina down there, and they was, they was white headed. But the next day, he come out and said, he won't look that way the next day. He started putting that water to them. He would have, he would have, he would go, we would get chickens dry as hell. And, uh, I mean, um, a lot of moisture on them, and we'd, to dehydrate them and dry them up. Right. But he's right in the right reverse. He can rule wet and then dry them up. Right. Que dice que estamos hablando de Sammy, como ganaba Davis, que ellos secaban un gallo y luego le metían humedad, y Sammy le metía mucha humedad y le quitaba humedad. So which way do you think is the best way? Oh, you can't, you can't go against a Sammy, can you? It's hard. <laughs> he'd be right in the money every time. He, he dominated something for a long time. Yeah, for he, he, he was the best thinking man that I'd ever seen. He took me in there, and somebody was telling me how he, he, he cheats people. And I said, I don't believe that. You know what? It is so. Well, um, that's just Spanish. When you're on top, everyone talks about you. When, it, when you're on top, everybody talks bad about you. That's what I'm dumb, but I, I, I took up for him, you know, and he, he he liked that. So Sammy did. He called. He said, "I'll show you everything I did." Que Sammy le enseñó muchas cosas también. So he showed me how he done it. Okay. And, okay. and uh, I said, "Well, you do right reverse what people do." So and, so you, so then you he puts a lot more sure and then starts taking it out the last no, day. He gets there. He, he keeps starts dry as a bowl and then he soaks them at the pit. Yeah, they so they, they eat. If it starts raining, it's still gonna be out in the rain. Empieza a llover ahí en Sunset. I remember, ever you say that? Bueno, dicen que que cuando empezaba a llover en Sunset, que todo el mundo metía los gallos y él los sacaba a la lluvia. That's true, Brett. When everybody um, at Sunset it starts raining, everybody start bringing the roosters in and he bring them out. Yes. Que los sacaba la lluvia, el el Sammy. 
You walk in this cock house, it's like a fog. You can't even see the keeps dog. Dice Brent que, que, que entrabas a su, a, su, a, su, a su bañera y estaba como un, como un, como un chico de hombre adentro. He's he doing something right. <laughs> que hace algo bien. So, um, Mr. Alexander, what, what lines do you use right now? What, do you have the hatches? I got the, well, I, I took a clay rooster. I told you Mr. Griffin said I yes, thought sir. it was And I come home, and it's late in the year. It was in June. And uh, I said, this rooster's so good. Everybody tries to buy, tried to buy him from him. I got to breed him some. Dice que le dijo a Griffin que este clare que jugó en salsa que, que le dijo, lo tengo que, lo tengo que, este gallo es muy bueno para no, para no meterle algo. What do you say? So I said, well, I, I got to bring him something. So I'm walking around looking and thinking. And I see my round, my wife, I had some round heads in it. And I told her, if they go setting, put them out on a short pen, small pen. Okay. On the grass. So she. Que era, I, que era, que era, sorry. Que era en junio y que, y que dijo, hay que meterle algo. Y tenía unas gallinas cabreza rodando que se las metió. So then you got them to that round heads? I, I said, I'm going to breed him that round. He didn't move him around every day and get the eggs off the ground. Okay. We're not, I must have won 30 or 40 straight fights for them. Que dice que ganó 30 or 40. Just a, a, a lucky maybe. <laughs> couldn't look, couldn't get one whipped. Wow. You still have that same cross? Yeah. Wow. Are they as good as that first cross? Here's what I done. I, I think that that worked. So I started breeding the round head to the clarets and okay. the clarets to the round head. Que dice que le funcionó muy bien eso que que empezó a, a, cuida, a, a echarle el clarete al round head y a la vez también. And where I could see that the round heads cop, you, you wouldn't get a few fights out of him because they, he'd go back in quick. The round head. Yeah, the round head. Dice que con el round head este, era muy estimoso y, y más podía ganar una vez nomás. So the Griffin Claret, you could fight seven, eight time winners out of it. Con los claretes lo puede jugar siete, ocho veces. When they cripple one, they're not going nowhere. They sit there to watch him die. So how'd you, how'd you fix that? You just yeah. added more claret blood to the cross, or? And I just kept breeding the clarets. The Griffin roosters won't go in. Okay. So I just bred that, and then, then breed as many as the round is. Because I could win the same amount of fights, but I'd get them Crippled. So, so how do you cross the clarets then? Just pure, fight them pure. Well, you could fight them pure. But, but to. Le estoy preguntando que 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 cómo cruzar los clarets, que con los cabezas rondas que les juegan muy bien. But the half and halves were were too aggressive too. No, the half the half and half wasn't aggressive. Oh, well, they were good. They were our claret rooster. With the rounded hands, right? Rounded hands. The other way around, it was they were too good. You, 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 they rushed back in. Dice que la cruza que les funcionaba mejor era el clarete cayó sobre las gallinas rounded y que hacía 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 salir más 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 el papá. Do you so you still have the same claret right now? Yeah, I got the same ones come from Mr. Griffin. Oh wow, and they're the same ones that your, your daddy's got. Only right, difference right? is Big Jim got his from Blondie and he got his from Griffin. Oh wow. Yeah. Well, I got some from Blundy too, along. Blundy know more about taking than anybody. Yeah. I think If I got in trouble about something, I'd ask Blundy. Dice cuando tenía problemas con algo o una pregunta le le hablaba Blundy. So you got the clarets, you got the ra the rabbits or, or laces, right? Laces, yeah. Where they come from? Carl Davis uh, was a guy that was a uh, judge. Lacy was a federal judge, and he couldn't go to fights. Dice que él se ganó de Carl Davis los rabbits que era eh, que que Lacey, well, Judge Lacey era, era un, un juez federal y no podía ir a las peleas. So then what happened then? Well, uh, Carl Davis would, would fight the roosters for Judge Lacey. Okay. And uh, so uh, Carl had him. But this, this uh, Harold then would, when I first started with Harold, was that they, they'd have him around heads up there and he thought how good them round heads was. But at the last, he, They would, they lose. They worked them, say. Too much, uh, you can't work around. Dice que lo, no eran muy ganadores porque los trabajaban mucho, los roundheads. They was working them all the time. Right. When Carl David got hard that Red Rolling, you remember him? Uh, mm -hmm. Boy Red Rolling, Indiana, he, he, he hired him and he was lazy as hell. 
and he wouldn't work. So, <laughs> so they won, got to win. Ah, did they get que se lo dieron a otra persona? Who was that person? That, that, right? Who 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 was that person? What was his name again? Uh, Carl, you know, the, the, the man, Red Rolling. Que se lo dieron a Red Rolling para cuidarlos y que Red Rolling era bien huevón. Entonces, pero eso le benefició a los gallos eso porque los ranches de él si los trabajas muchos no sirven para nada. So because that helped them out for being, being oh, lazy. Oh, they won like hell in. Que se sigue nada ya entonces. He started. So, he started winning with them, but to start with them and it worked. Curtis would work the shit out of them, and uh, he, he, he would wear them down to last. Mr. Griffin, he wouldn't work no roosters. Griffin wore it? No. Do, 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 do you think Griffin no, no trabajaba los gallos? Now, when you say work the roosters, I mean, you know, fly, fly the roosters. He, I would tell you what, what he would do. He would keep his roosters out there in the fly pens, Mr. Griffin, because I'd go in down there and picking up roosters and back and forth continuously. So I'd, I'd watch everything was, he had down there. You couldn't get in his cock out. Oh, you, you couldn't, couldn't get in Blondie's cock out. Dice que, dice que Griffin uh, no lo trabajaba mucho y que... Blondie learned from Griffin. Right. Que Blondie aprendió de Griffith, pero que eran muy secretivos. But they, they taught you everything. They, they wouldn't keep any secrets from you? I do what I They wouldn't keep any secrets from you? They taught you everything? No, they wouldn't keep no secrets from me. No secrets from you. I mean, they taught uh, you everything. They tried. I, I learned from them the hard way. Okay. So I, I just just observe, and they say, uh, "We're coming over here, and uh, we're going to have a party." And uh, they said, "Well, we'll bring, we'll bring Ray with us. You don't care." They said, "No, I don't bring Ray, because he'll ask you too damn many questions." Dice que tuvieron una fiesta una vez Roland y Griffith y que y que le dijeron traemos a Ray. No, 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 no lo traigo porque es muy preguntón. So he asked you too damn many questions, so I didn't get invited to go around there, but I'd see what they had in there around the thing. And Mr. Griffin, he'd take all the chucks out, and uh, when he's going to fight the rooster, and, and he just let them sit up on the pole, and he just worried get them get them out out. And so I said to myself, I got he he do he must be right. And so I started doing that in the Philippines. Just not I, not working them at all. No, yeah, no, I didn't work. Never work one of them. Just sparring. And uh, now do, do I, that, that working and base working them all like killer. You think if you don't have much of a guy in the mesa, lo matas. Um, so you think rotating is better then? You can move them around outside, outside, it's all right. But you better not be working one in there. Dice que lo mejor es, es rotar un gallo. Leave him out there for a week at least. Y dice que lo mejor es, es dejarlos una semana afuera, más relajados. Do you believe in sparring? Yeah. How many times do you spar during the keep? When you I spar two or three times. During the keep? Yeah. So once a week? Yeah. Que lo, él, él los topa una vez a la semana. Do you believe in sparring the same day or you don't like to spar on the same day of the fight? No, I, I, I spar on the day of the fight sometimes. Dice que a veces los, también los topa el día de la semana. That, well, that don't hurt one. It actually helps him, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I just learned. Henry Wortham was the best uh, chicken man in the country. Who was? Henry Wortham. Okay, Henry Wortham was a good guy. He knows more about chicken than anybody living. His pool would bring three times as more as anybody else's there. So Harold would lend me out to learn from him. So Harold Brown would... He, he, he let me go with Henry. He was old then, and barely couldn't get around. So he let me out to work for him. And listen to this, he'd take his roosters out, and he, he'd have me, said, you come up here about dark, we're going to go out there, and you find me a, uh, an orange tree out there, and a roost to put them chickens on. So we'd mud them on, and he said, be here at 4 o'clock in the morning. And we'll get them all, and that's what we done. Okay. Everybody else the roosters would be in them houses all that long, and they'd be all pieces. Henry's would be fresh. That's how you want all them fights. You think it, uh, do you think he had to ask him to write the rules, and they never have been changed. So uh, how do you keep how do you keep a rooster fresh? I don't understand that. You put him out in the night air. Ah, uh, dice que. Que la mayoría de gente, los gallos los ponía en un cuarto para descansar los últimos días que él no, él los dejaba fuera en los, en los voladeros. So you, you think it's better to rest a rooster outside in the night air than it is in sure. the room? 
El padre no es nada. Pero... Dice que para él es mejor este, tener un gallo eh, descansando afuera en un voladero que, que en un cuarto. Que es fr fresh, ¿verdad? Right? Es fresh, y tiene que tener el aire en el aire todo el tiempo. Y eso es lo que se trata. Harold, first thing I know, he got his out there at night. Too so roosting. A question: uh, How many times did you go to the Philippines? I stayed over for about six years. Here, my daughter—I got a daughter from the Philippines. I had her while I was over. So you were busy. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. Dice, le pregunté que cuando fue a las Filipinas, pues tengo una hija de allá. But the Filipinos ain't nobody can ever go over. You hear the Americans talk. This and that, but you don't never see none of them after the first day. Dice que los filipinos este. They all get there. Que todos van allá, todos los gringos van para las Filipinas a pensar que van a ganar, pero pero que nadie gana. They're they're tough. Huh? They're good breeders and they're good. They're, good they're the best team people in the world. Dice que los filipinos son los mejores galleros del mundo. Um, who's tough over there right now? All them Filipinos. Are tough. It, les voy a preguntar que por qué son tan duros los filipinos. Why are they so tough? They they just got more sense than we got. The first thing they warm their rooster up. Well, if you go to thinking a boxer warms up, he fights three minutes in dressing room, shadow boxing. But when he comes in the ring, he's 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 already sweating. They don't fight him cold. Dice que los filipinos este bueno que un boxeador. They gotta warm that rooster up. But they warm for a while, huh? For they a long time. Warm, they get him hot. When they bring him in there, he's cold. He, he ain't not no moisture in him. Dice que ellos lo chían mucho los gallos. O sea, chía antes de la pelea lo chían mucho porque dice como un boxeador que que por dos tres minutos está antes de la pelea está está practicando y ya entra al a ring ya con poquito de sudor. Que igual que los gallos también los filipinos los le gustan este como chían los gallos antes de entrar al, al anillo. I mean, you, 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 they, they built him up, but they don't tear him out, right? Just, just, you yes, know, they warm him up. Warm they don't let him, uh, shadow box him around. Que le, le, más que el, lo chían poquito más antes, antes de la... The old parents were going to warm him up before they turn him loose. And they're great breeders too, right? They're the best of everything. Que they're the best of far ahead of the American people. There's no contest. Que están muy, muy adelante de los de los de los americanos. You will not. You hear the Americans talk. They do this wrong. They do that wrong. But after the first day, you, you, you get out of there. You don't see no Americans there. Who who who? Um. Digo, dice que todos los gringos hablan hablan mal que hacen esto mal aquello mal, pero que nunca nunca llegan al al al, al final con contra los filipinos. How about Mexico? You been to Mexico? Yeah. How many times? Several times. Did you like Mexico? Yeah. The people? Yeah, I like the people. Que le pregunto que si ha ido a México, y que sí muchas veces que... Le pregunto que si le gusta la gente, y yo que sí, que le gusta mucho la gente. What What do you think about the competition down there? In Mexico? Yes, sir. They got some good roosters down there, too. Que también tienen buenos... They've gotten mismo. good, too. Que también han, han, hemos mejorado también mucho los mexicanos también. Muy bueno. Well, they warm their roosters up, too. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Um, so besides the clarets, uh, the roundheads, what else do you have, sir? And the Bobby Bowls, right? I got them Bobby Bobby Bowls because uh, I, I, every time I fight one, he 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 didn't look good winning, but he's winning. Dice que los Bobby Bowls cuando cuando ganaban no ganaban impresionante, pero ganaban. And they're not aggressive roosters, you know. They que son muy listos. You can just put them. You can put Bobby Bowls. You can put four, and, and when he put his roosters out, he put four in the corner, and he because they ain't going nowhere. You put them all together? You put up one in this corner and one in that corner. And that's, they stay there. Dice que los varios bosses los ponían en un cuarto los cuatro gallos y, y que se quedaban en cada esquina en su esquina. Que no se... Somebody told me a story about a jumper where he fought a derby, he won the derby, and after the derby, the, all four fighters were eating from the same plate. Probably. If the, um... Jumper got pretty good there uh, at the last. He's like me. I, I thought I'd know every damn thing, didn't know shit. <laughs> Dice que el que yo pero al final también se hizo muy buen gallero que está como correlacionando que pensaba que sabía todo y no sabía nada. So you never stop learning. I always learn all my life every day. Dice que siempre quiero aprender algo diferente. You, you got if you, if you stop learning you you out of it. Dice que si si paras de aprender. You learn something all the time. 
That's where you have. That's where you got as far as you got. Yeah. Now I got troubles in there. So damn many troubles you couldn't believe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you that trouble before you leave. <laughs> I found it out there. It, 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 Seventy four, I think. Or, what was that? At? What was that? Sunset. Que ganó en San Diego. That was the Kelso Memorial. Did you win Cocker of the Year any time in Sunset or no? Oh, I won it several times, Cocker of the Year, and I va won it all over the Kemper Marley. Que va más veces ganó uh, Gallero del Año en Sunset. Que I, I won that Derby six years in a row. <coughs> six years in a row. <coughs> yeah. Which Derby is that? Kemper Marley. That was the biggest derby they had back then. Que el derby Kemper Marley era el derby más grande en la sunset, en sunset, right? No, he, he was from Arizona. But it was at Sunset, that Kemper Marley tribute? No. Uh, yeah, it was at Sunset. Que lo ganó seis veces consecutivos que en ese tiempo. But I learned every day of my life. When you get to where you can't le learn no more, you had it. Somebody to get you. Que dice que todos los días gana. I mean, that's why I hear your whole story. Toda tu historia es de aprender, aprender de diferentes personas. I hear your story, and, and you know, you learn so much from each person you meet, right? I mean, because um, it's very humble how you you know talk about people, how you know you you learn from everybody. You, know? you learn from everybody. You learn something. Somebody will have some sense. Even the water boy can teach you something sometimes. You just gotta listen. And when you get to where you know everything, that's when you're gone. But it's when you think you know everything, it's when you don't serve for another one person. That's very true, sir. That's very true. I guarantee you, yes. Yeah. So you got, you got the, the um, ACUs, the clarets, the roundheads. What yeah. else do you have, sir? Well, Ted McLean, when I was up there, the last time I had a lunch with him, well, uh, he, he, his home was like a museum. Dice que estaba con Ted McLean la última vez que, que lo vio, que su casa era como un museo de trophies, de trofeos. Trophies and old, 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 uh, made in England years and years ago. He was up, he was on the throne of England. Ted McLean. He married McLean. Okay. Que Ted McLean era. But he was on the he was on the on the board. He could uh, could win the king. Era uno de la de la familia royal de de Inglaterra. Ted McLean. And he was that type of guy. They had a picture of him on in there, and he went, he showed it to me, and. Uh, you you move, move right here and look, stand out and look at it, and there's uh, two two roosters squared off of each other. Okay. But you move over here, and it's Lord Wellington and Napoleon sparred off. Of Napoleon. Other. Yeah. Que había una 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 un un trato de un retrato de bueno una pintura de Napoleon jugando los gallos también. Napoleon la la Napoleon la Napoleon la Bonaparte, uh, right? Yeah. So. So you got your McLean from him, from Tim McLean? Dave McLean, yeah. You still have the same McLean? Yes. Yeah. Uh, miss, is there a number where people can call you guys for stock? For what? For like foul, people can call a phone number? Yeah, the one that you guys called earlier is the okay. same. You don't, you don't have a Facebook account? What? You don't have a Facebook account? Uh, we do not. You don't? What's that number, just so I can tell the people? Brett? Si alguien quiere algo de, de animales, pueden hablar con... Um, um, well, I can give you both. My cell phone is, I could probably be, um, my phone number probably a lot better. Si alguien quiere animales, eh, pueden hablar su teléfono. What's the number? 708. 708. 203. 203. 7530. 75. 30. 30. 30. Ese es el teléfono de la hija de Ray donde pueden cagar este comentarios y gallos. Um, so you got oh, so the, you're talking about the Tim McLean that he gave you the hatches. Yeah, he, he, he was a genius. Que era un genio este Tim McLean para criar. Uh, and uh, he told me he said uh, Ray he said the best chicken man that I've seen in my life 
of this boy that lived up in there where they live. And he said, that guy can teach you something. So I never forgot it. I was always watching him. Who was that? Ted McLean told me this boy knows right. more about chickens than it said. I never seen nobody know much about chickens. He, he was talking about you? No, it's the other boy. Oh, the other boy. Okay. So, uh, que Ted McLean dijo que había un, un gallero que era muy bueno, que, que, que era muy listo. Entonces, este, Ray Alexander fue con él para aprenderle. So I, I started watching him. And I, then he did know everything more than anybody ever said. He went to all in derbies up north in Short Hills. Okay. And uh, so I swore I, I, I started paying attention and I said, shit. And I don't get no rooster. If I get a rooster from anybody, it'll be him. And he told me, he said, you let him come on your place, you get the best thing you got. If you let him on your place. You think that person, if you left your gallera, your gallera told you what was the best gallo. How will he pick up the best rooster? He just got, he got a knack for doing it. He just got a knack for doing it. So when I won't get tight for a brood cop, I call him. Okay. And I told him what Ted McLean told me. And he sent me a cock. That boy? That boy. Now, que le, que and every time I get one from him, it's ace. Que, que le pidió un guy, what was he hatch? He, just, he got every kind. Okay. Uh, what he's got right now that he uses more than anything, they, they, in Puerto Rico, they had this guy that fought up there in the north. And uh, they said he's a speedy little feller. It was a Jap. Okay. Come from Puerto Rico. And uh, Ted McLean, he, he, he saw some of these chicken he sent me, throw some black chicken. He said, now don't worry about him throwing a black chicken. Que el último gallo que le mandó Ted McLean también sacaba negros. Was he with a hatch cock? I, wanted to, I told him I needed a clack to freshen mine up. Oh, but he, he, he threw out black? That, that oh, clear it? He threw out black. So he, he bred the. Uh, Judge Wilkinson, no. Uh, Sometimes I can't think straight. But anyhow. Yes. You still have blacks or no? I still got them chickens. Blacks? I tell you what, when he told me there's all black and there's some blacks coming on there, I said, well, let me spar that damn rooster. I sparred him right there, he tear a chicken all to pieces. You look at it. Steve sent me. So uh, I know. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> what he's she's on the phone now. I what he say? Cause I, I messed your phone number and people are already calling for stock. People are already calling. Oh, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank, thank you, you so it's, much. It's a, it's an honor to be here, sir. Yeah, I'll do, I'll do everything in the world to help y'all out. But no, uh, you, you know, just got to know that you don't know everything. Dice que lo que uno que se, uno sabe es que uno no sabe nada. You know, that's, you know, that's, that's very humble from you, that, you know, that you, you know, you think that way. A lot of people think they know everything and they don't know crap, you they know. They don't know nothing. They, they won't t take, if you go to Blondie's house, you can't get in the house. Where? Blondie Rollins. His castle so junked up, you couldn't put a rooster is in there. Is he still, is still alive? No. Oh. Uh, he, 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 he put a rooster out in the fly pen and a small pen and he'd rest, start wrestling them in the small pen. And uh, that's where Blondie, ah, uh, he's trained. <coughs> Everybody that didn't work chickens, I went out to Joe Good. he was hard, unbeatable with him grazed at one time. But he wouldn't work him either. He wouldn't, uh, we, would, we was out there and we was going to a big fight they had up here at Newport, Tennessee, where they had the biggest fight there was. And I told my wife, well, we need to go out there and go through a keep with Joe Good. Que una vez fue él y su esposa a, 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 que pasa de la vez? Brett, can you pass me the battery and the cable, please? Que fueron a, a Tennessee, a... Uh, and who'd you go with to tra train retreats? Joe Good. Que fueron con Joe Good. Why'd you go with him? Because you know he was the best, or...? No, I am mean, yeah, he, he, he whooped everybody. Que fue con Joe Good a enseñarse a entrenar gallos. He know Joe Thank Good. You. He would whoop everybody in graves. Did and he work him a lot or no? Not only. Really. Dice que no retrajaba nada. We were out there and we'd stay drunk all the time. And I said, I ain't even gonna uh, <laughs> bar them roosters or something, do something with them. And uh, I'm trying to learn. Dice que, que, he you wouldn't know, even you take me around them. And we'd come up and feed in the afternoon. And then, I, so he, I don't know, I've been there, I said, he's putting me on. Dice que, que fue a él a entrenarse. Like the roosters are worried, but I'm, 
I drove, drove up to meet him at Knoxville. And we'd, then we'd go out in Tennessee to the big derby. See, he just wanted eight straight. Dice que fue a tratar. He'd go cut the feed on some of them, some of them he wouldn't pick them up. Oh, I hate to cut your feed, I'd die. I'm gonna cut it today. Dice que fue a entrenar con este, con, con Joe Good, y, y que, dice, pero más se pasaron borrachos todo el tiempo, que, que nunca los trabajó. But they were, they, they were probably really, really good roosters to win like that, right? Oh, he won eight straight. Uh, they, they, they was hell of a race. Do you have grades? Yeah. You have the same Joe Good grades, or? Uh, no, they're not Joe Good grades, but I did have some, but uh, mine could whoop his. Oh, wow. Me and Lonnie Harper would meet, and uh, Blondie told me, now I asked Blondie, how do you learn so much? Uh, Baby was his name, he died. But uh, he said, I learned from Baby. Okay. And, uh, I got a question, what, what kind of grades do you have? They come from my Steve. I told you, I don't want to get my chicken from nobody but Steve. If, if, uh, so, they, so you look at, what kind, what kind of grades are your, your grades? Whatever Harry Parr had. Okay, they come straight home? Yeah. And what do you like about your grades? It depends on the little heroes that they 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 win. Que son ganadores, they're cutters. Yeah, they, they, did, they did the cutters. Which are, le voy a preguntar que cuáles son sus gallos más cortadores. Which are your most cutting roosters? Clarets, around here? Clarets, que, clarets. Que los clarets son los que son, cortan más de todos. Mr. Griffin, that's all he wanted to, to a killing rooster. He wanted to kill that other one. Cutting mm -hmm. rooster. Dice que los mejores gallos de él y los mejores gallos de Griffin eran los claretes. And you still have them solid? You come, they come yellow leg and white leg, yours do? Yeah, Mr. Griffin's dead because, see, he didn't get, uh, when I was at Huntsville, and uh, John O'Fowler and I went, went, went in partners because I had a stag from Harrow. I kept running to they let me fight that stag. No, no, I don't fight him. And he finally called me up one day. He said, you still got this one-eyed stag? He gave me a one-eyed stag. And uh, so I said, yeah. He said, well, bring him up there. John O'Fowler bought that man out at one sunset. Okay. And so I, I took it for that stag up there. And so John O said, you lay me, this is a stag against that cop. You lay me a two to one and I'll fight you. We, he knocked the stag's lie out to fly. Okay. But the stag would run out and catch it. What, what was he? It was a, just a uh, hat stag. Hat stag. And uh, I thought I took three, I roosted three of his. Okay. That the guy just won the derby. Or like, were, were them hatchcocks? No, they, they was grays. That he, oh, the grays. And uh, that he won with. But uh, I took that baby stag and we whooped three of his chickens with him. Dice que, que los giros de él son muy buenos, que jugó unos pollos contra un partido muy grande que los ganó. So how long, how long have you had this grace for? Joe Good? The, no, your grace, how long you had him for? Oh, I got him from Harry Parr. I, he'd fight chickens up there. And so he kept on bragging, bragging on them hatches and all that. But I'd seen him fight a gray. And goddamn, I said, goddamn, you ought to be fighting them grays, not que, them. Que los giros eran de un circo que se llama Parter, que estaba jugando los hatches y luego jugó un giro, y que le dijo el rey Alexander que debía de estar jugando esos grays, esos giros más. So uh, I got to watching it, and uh, where was I at? Let me think, go back to where I was at. Them grace that you... Uh, did Joe Goose hand? Yeah. Uh, no, the grace that you got from, from... Oh, I got him from Harry Parr. Parr, yeah. He, he'd, he'd, he'd win with him grazing and just wipe a chicken out. I said, that's what you need to be fighting. And uh, so he said, you want this roof? I said, yeah. He kept, it's your part that le dio ese giro. He gave them to me. He That's where you got your braids from? That's where I got my braids. They did good to you? Yes. So you, okay, so once again, we have, you have the round hits, the clarets, which are your best cutting roosters, your ACOs, uh, your grays, and what else do you have? That's it? I got the hatches and my hair on. Y los hatches. Whatever hair on hand, I could get it. Vienen directamente de Harold Brown. Él puede conseguir cualquier gallo de con, que él quería con Harold Brown, que es uno de los creadores más famosos que ha habido en, en la historia de, de the, the gallos. Um, guys, um, aquí estamos con este, con el señor Ray Alexander. 
Es un honor la verdad estar aquí, la verdad, yo siempre he soñado, soñado con estar aquí con este señor. Um, eh, aquí vamos a continuar con la, con, la, con la entrevista. Por favor, comparten la entrevista, comenten. Si no les contesto ahorita todos los saludos, este, después les contesto. Your trios are what, a thousand dollars your trios? Yeah. Son mil dólares los trios. Um, también les quiero avisar que ahorita ya estamos buscando distribuidores. Uh, gente seria que quiera ganar dinero, uh, ya bajamos la, la compra mínima a cinco docenas para distribuidores, aquí y en Estados Unidos también. Um, pues si gustan este, y, y les interesan mis productos, yo la verdad yo no cobro por las entrevistas, yo pago todos mis, mis, mis viáticos para venir con esta gente, por el bien de ustedes y, y lo único que le pido que, que si pueden comprarme unas docenas o pueden usar mis productos, eh, se lo agradece mucho. Aquí estamos para servirles, compañeros. Sigue, seguimos con la entrevista. Es Jimmy Johnson. Hey, he was a, he was a, he was a good chicken man. He's a good chicken man, Jimmy Johnson. Um, you know Jimmy Johnson. From Johnson. California, yeah. Yeah, okay. He's a good chicken man. Okay, well, uh, he, he come asked me, he said, I hear you've been doing good in the Philippines. He says, uh, I got a trip over. I said, no. I, I, I want you to give me some tips. I said, well, the first thing I'll tell you, Jimmy, you ain't gonna win. Dijo Jimmy, di, le dijo, um, Jimmy Johnson es un, es un creador y, y gallero de California que muy, muy duro, mi respeto para el señor Jimmy Johnson, que le preguntó a Ray, hoy voy para las Filipinas, ¿qué consejos me das? Y le digo, pues, el primer consejo que te doy es que no vas a ganar allá. So you told me you're not, you're not going to win over there? No, I said, you ain't going to win. He said, what the hell do you mean I ain't going to win? I whooped these Filipinos out here like I own them. I, I said, yeah, but them great papers. <laughs> When you get old, Ray, you're going to be up against doctors, lawyers, and working. Dice que le dijo Ray, le dijo Ray a, este, a, a Jimmy Johnson, no vas a ganar allá. ¿Y por qué? Pues aquí en California los, 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 los madreó cada rato. Sí, pero aquí son este, picadores de, 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 de uvas. Y allá vas a jugar contra, contra jueces y gobernadores y, y presidentes. <laughs> It's true, though. Well, he come back. I seen him at sunset the next five. And he... I said, how'd you do it, Jimmy? He said, God damn it. <laughs> I didn't want to fight. He said, I, they whooped me so damn bad. Uh, I said, well, I told you you wasn't going to win over there. Dice, le pregunté que cuando yeah. fue a la estancia, lo, lo vio a Jimmy Johnson y le preguntó cómo le fue. Dijo, no, me pusieron una putiza, no gané ni una pelea. You better find them great pickers out there, what they fight against. When you got over there, they ain't up against no great pickers. They spent, I mean, they spent. They breed uh, people. Ya, yeah, que dice que le digo que, que allá en los filipinos no, 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 no les duele gastar en, 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 en tener la, unos buenos gallos y tener todas sus cosas bien. So I don't, so, uh, now when I talk to a Filipino, I go to ask them questions. Yeah. Because they know. Dice que también a los filipinos les gusta preguntar muchas preguntas porque ellos saben muchas cosas. So Jimmy done whooping them great figures, he thought he was fighting whooping Filipinos. Yeah, But, dice, dice que es muy diferente lo, jugar contra un trabajador aquí en California que con un gobernador o un presidente ya en las Filipinas porque tienen más dinero para comprar buenos animales y, y crear lo mejor y tener más selección. Then people will show you how smart they are when you go to mocking well. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's an elite group, huh? The ones that are in the Philippines, the ones that win all the time. I mean, it's... it's yeah, that's an elite group. They, they just got a knack for it. And they can do it too. Estamos hablando de los filipinos que tienen un, un don para los animales, para los gallos. I learned more from the Filipinos than they ever learned from me. What, what, what do you, why do you think they do so well in breeding and, and feeding? And, I mean, what, what's They're your so secret? dedicated. Le estoy preguntando que por qué son tan, tan exitosos los filipinos en jugar los gallos y que son muy dedicados. Uh, dedicated, what do you mean by dedicated? I mean... They just, day and night, sir, that's all they got on their mind is cockfighting. Dice que todo el tiempo están pensando and en... Good at something, but if you do that, it goes on your mind continuously. Dice que cualquier cosa que tú tengas en tu mente lo haces muy bien. Cualquier cosa. It's like the law of attraction, you know, what you think about, you, you, you track your life, you know? Yes. Uh -huh. So you better listen to people smarter than you are. Do you. Dice que tienes que dar. Con este. <coughs> tienes que escuchar a la gente cuando te dan un consejo, escucharlo. Ray, do you regret anything in your life? Well, I was raised as poor as a person could be raised, and I've done all right. Okay. So you don't regret anything? I don't regret nothing. 
le digo que si no tiene un algo que hubiera hecho diferente, digo, pues mira, nací lo más pobre que se pueden hacer y, y he hecho bien mi vida. Um, what's been your biggest triumph in life? ¿Quién es? Digo que cuál ha sido su mejor triunfo en su vida y que las, los gallos. I can always figure them out. See, where people make a mistake, they want to pick up, a, they want to, uh, if you got a weight lifter, for example, you can pick up all the iron and the things and lift some weights. And right. People think he's something. Right. But he can't, whoop, he can't knock me down. Dice que es como tener un, una, una persona que hace pesas. Se ve bien fuerte, pero contra un boxeo, contra él no pueden. So you just go look, go look around. Who does knock them people out? Those be skinny guys. Que dice que la gente delgada. So you're, 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 you're a big gym. He'll get, he'll, he'll get the roots down real thin, right? You what? He'll oh. get the roots down real thin. But you look at the boxers, all them boxers, Sugar Ray Robinson, yeah, was yeah. 145 pounds, six foot two, was a, known as the greatest fighter of all time. You yeah. ask Ray, you fight a fat Claire, he's dead. Yeah, you better not have one of that. Yeah. Ma'am, could you write down the number on a piece of paper, that way could people, both numbers, please? And that way I can put on them. If you look at any boxer out there, it's, it's good. It's like my arm, I mean, his arms were 14 inches. Okay. Uh, it's the speed. I tell you where it's at. It's the speed que, you put behind the punch. Que, que lo, que lo, lo más importante es, es la rapidez atrás de un, de un golpe. But you, for that speed, you need, to, you need the wrist to be thin, right? Fairly thin, like Sugar Ray Robinson. Well, all, all, them, all them fighters ever were. So do you like a, do you, do you, I mean, when you, you say, no when big arm, when big you, do you see it? When you say thin on a rooster, do you say like no fat, no gut fat, but you want a big chest or no, not a big no, chest? No, not that. You don't want no big chest. All the boxers are skinny looking. Dice que para para que un gallo you es, won't find one es tenerlo que chest. tenerlo fino de cuerpo, o sea, sin, sin mucho músculo. So you think a, a thinner rooster is better than a mu muscular rooster? Well, Blondie thought was thin. Uh, mm -hmm. He was tough as they was. <laughs> and then Filipinos too. I mean, the Filipinos también lo, lo juegan los muy, muy delgados. They don't fat on them. They're good. But uh, you can learn things by observing and watching. Dice que puedes aprender mucho en ver un gallo, observarlo. See, you can't take a sledgehammer and drive a nail with it. You take a 16 ounce hammer and sink a nail with it. Thank you. Just the speed you put behind the punch. Okay. One in weightlifters throw it three, uh, three hundred miles an hour, and one in skinny boxers, I throw it to them, throw the punch to them fast. It'll knock you out of there. Dice que que lo que importa es es esa es la rapidez de un gallo. What about ACO? ACOs are aren't very fast, are they? Or they are fast? No, they they can throw a punch pretty fast. Yeah, they can. Yeah. So the, well, the minus two things is the speed behind the punch instead of the power? Oh, it's not the power, I ain't got nothing to do with it. Dice que, que no tiene que ver nada el poder, eh, lo que es es la rapidez del, de lo que va atrás del golpe del gallo. So, so, not a big chest? No. Boxers don't have no big chest. Dice que los boxeadores no tienen así, skinny, they look skinny. tan delgados, musculosos, pero delgados. So muscular, but, 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 but trimmed, right? Yeah, trim, trim. Okay. That makes sense. This guy, you got to think what, uh, what's fighting out there. Tienes que comparar lo que está bien. So, um, Brent, uh, Christopher, Brent, um, Sammy, he fought him then too? Did you ever feel Sammy's research or no? No, I, I ain't never been into that. Now, Big Jim probably did. You can ask him when we get back home. Big okay. Jim was friendly with everybody. Big Jim knows a lot about chickens. Yes, sir. I guarantee you that. I met him the other day. It was a pleasure to meet him too. He's a funny guy. Yeah, he yeah. is. Funny as hell. He yeah. is real funny. I had a, I've, I've, I've been blessed, uh, you know, getting to know Brent and his family. They're, they're good people. Yeah. They're pretty good breeders. Yeah. Yeah. They know chickens. They know chickens. Yeah. Yeah. Brent's kind of funny looking though, but he's, a, he's a, <laughs> <laughs> he's an okay guy, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. What do you think? What do you think of him as a breeder? They're good breeders. Yeah. Yeah, they know what to do. Okay. They got your clarets too, right? I mean, well, they came from the same, you know, region. Yeah, he knows what kind of chicken takes to win. Guys, here's a number for, for uh, 
the home number and, and uh, cell phone number for Mr. Ray Alexander. If anybody wants any stock, uh, there's his number. Aquí está el número de teléfono del señor Ray, casa y celular. Por favor, no hablen nomás para hablar de pollos, para hablar de gallos. Uh, Puras llamadas serias. Eh, si van a, a hablar para preguntar 20,000 preguntas y no comprar, mejor no hablen. I'm telling everybody, uh, only serious call. If they're going to call just to talk chickens for three hours and not buy anything, not to call. <laughs> <laughs> That's a number. That's a number for uh, uh, Mr. Ray Alexander. Entonces, les pido de favor. Hey, Sa Sandra, yeah. would you give me uh, the, that picture of a. Oh, I got a hang up in your honor. Okay. A sweater McGinnis and then, then get me that trophy. I want to show them the trophy I want. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Hey, Hilby, can I borrow that phone? Yeah. Questions, please. Which, where are you going? Back to the one side? Yeah, the, the questions. Gracias. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Hey, Bill, you better watch your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get shot out here and I let me have a hug. Este, yo, yo, yo le digo a Brent Hillbilly, él me dice. Ah. Uh, I don't know exactly what. Let's see. Um. So your favorite family of all is your clarets? That's that's the family that I'd go with. Dice que su favorita línea. Mr. Griffin knew more about chicken than I didn't think. I thought the chicken wasn't no count. I thought he just got looked at, looked at him. He tapped me on the shoulder. He had me all the way, but I just looked at him. I do the same thing next time. Dice que Griffin sabía mucho la verdad que. So, do your clarets cross you with everything? Yeah, cause they cut. Dice que los clarets cruzan con todo porque cortan mucho su. So no una cosa. But you can't find him fat though, huh? You can't no, find him big. No, you can't find him fat. Y que no lo puedes jugar este gordos ni, ni, ni musculosos. Tienes que jugar los más delgados. What's your best cross? Clare around, yeah. Que su mejor cruza son los clare round heads. Um, when, when... Oh, that's a trophy. That trophy is from... Let's see. It says... Kelsey Memorial ACOG Derby won by Ray Alexander in 74. Now, para los que no saben, este, este, Sunset era un, una, un palenque en, en Luisiana que iban todos los mejores gallegos del mundo y era una, un prestigio de, de jugar en Sunset. I'm telling you that, you know, going to Sunset and fight was a prestigious thing, you know? Yeah, that, that was the biggest derby in the world. At that time. Dice que es el más grande del mundo en ese tiempo. That was the Kale Summer War. That's when he just died. So you went at one time? Oh, I just, I just went down there at one, at one time. Es que lo jugó una vez, lo jugó una vez y lo ganó ese derby. But, but, Sunset was a like prestigious, I mean, derby, right? It was more about prestige than, than it is about winning it, right? Yeah, Sunset was a tough place to fight. Dice que Sunset era el más duro para jugar. Um, how do you keep your lines fresh? Do you do inbreeding or, or line breeding? Well, I, I, this guy, Ted McLean, I listened to this other guy. Whatever he told me to do, I do it. Uh, he said that's the best chicken man he ever seen. And Ted McLean, no chickens. Okay. And uh, so I listened to what he said. Le estoy preguntando que, que, que como es mejor este, cruzar este... Hermanos con hermanos o cruzar este papá. So do you think it's better to cross, um, you know, daddies with daughters and granddaughters or, or brother and sister no, or, no, or niece no. to nephews? You can't even breed. You can't breed and breed? No, hell. You think no. Que no, que no, no bueno That's one este... thing I know, don't, not to inbreed. So when you say inbreed, it's no sister to brother no, no. and no father to daughter? No, no way, no kin. Okay, so you would do it by uh, aunt and nephews and like that? Just take the dog a rooster and put it in there. You can't no claim and 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 it's not the papa, the hija, ni ni la nieta. How come? Well, how come you? Don't I don't know. I, I just know that it won't work. You can't know that because no, 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 because
I'd ask Blondie questions, and he'd always give me the right answer. And uh, I, I said, Blondie, how did Mr. Griffin win all them goddamn fights he won? And he pulled him down, he could just whisper, he's on his deathbed, and he could cut. Dice que, que le, pregunté, le preguntó a Blondie que cómo Griffin jugaba, to, ganaba todas sus peleas y que era lo más, o sea, que, ¿por qué ganaba tantas peleas? Y que lo más importante era el corte. So, no way bring it on. No. So, just far away kin, right? Yeah, far away kin. Get que sobrinos, o sea, pero que nada de, de, de gallo con, con hijas, ni, ni, ni hermano con, so even brother or sister, big no, no, right? No, no big no, no. That's end breed. Um, how do you pick a brewcock? Le voy a preguntar cómo cómo escoge un gallo un cemental y ahorita también le voy a preguntar cómo escoge una gallina. It's hard to say. You just you just got to pick what you think's the best, and the most out of sex is in. Dice que digo que que cómo escoge un gallo para cemental y que pues mira, este trata de hacerlo escoger lo mejor que puedas y casi siempre vas a un accidente cuando lo agarres bien. That's funny. <laughs> That's right. Anybody that says they know how to pick one, just go, well, how he's going to turn out they don't have food. You can't. You don't ever know. Dice que nunca sabes si si un cemental va a funcionar o no. So, do you, do you recommend fighting, fighting a brewcock? Yeah, fight. That's the way I tell. Dice que lo, el mejor modo sería, sería este, jugar un cemental. What about a hen? How do you... How do you pick a hen? Hello. Yes. You don't ever know. Nobody Neither. know knows how to pick them. I don't find. Uh, you can't know more than. So you just try to get the healthiest rooster or what? You can help. Help. Help is everything. So health is the most important thing. Most important. Que lo más importante es la salud. So when you have sick roosters, like a sick, you know, uh, stag, what do you do with them? Kill it. Que cuando ve un un pollo enfermo que hace que lo mata you gotta be healthy que tiene que estar sano que es lo más importante um, do you prefer le voy a preguntar que si prefiere crear con pollos o con gallos machos o con gallinas o pollas what do you recommend um, a cock for breeding or a stag for breeding stag que le comenda más un, un pollo para criar que para que un gallo why is that because of all your good children come out of young people que todos los hijos, mejores hijos... Old people, so old, full looking people. <laughs> the what? Old people, so old looking babies. Dice, dice que, que los mejores hijos salen cuando uno está joven. Y bajan con los gallos. So, hen, same thing? Yeah. Hen, the pullets are better than hen? Yeah. The younger, the better. Que lo más, eh, entre más joven el gallo... Well, oh, you best children come out in people. They're like that. They don't come out of Nothing has been selected. Okay. Dice que los joven. So you only use your brood cock for, for one or two years, is it? Well, if he's, uh, if he's throwing good chickens, I might use him more, but if he's not throwing good chickens, I get rid of him quickly. Dice que un, un it's not all an accident. Dice que todo es un accidente, la verdad. So there's, there's, no, there's no formula, right? Hell no. No es una fórmula, o sea, es un... Es un <laughs> me voy a... Uh, burst your bubble, you know? <laughs> es, es todo un accidente cuando funciona una cruza. Este, que si el gallo le está dando buen, buenos cementales, buenos pollos, pues se lo sigue, si no, no. So let's say a, a rooster gives you really, really good suns out of him. How, would, how long would you use him for? I'd use him to throw in bad chickens. Que... And he'll go throw in bad you could, So a, a, a good rooster... Uh, when he gets old, he ain't going to produce you. Dice que un cemental puede que un año o dos años te dé buenos, buenos pollos, pero que llega un momento que ya no te va a dar buenos pollos. So he'll throw bad ones after, at the end, right? Yeah. He'll throw bad ones at the end? Yeah. Y al último ya no te va a dar buenos pollos como, como los primeros all años. All your best chickens are always made accidentally. Que los mejores gallos There siempre se hacen por accidentes. Wow. Well, come from an accident. <laughs> um, so your what's your favorite weapon? Long knife, short knife, or gaff? I didn't care what you fought in when I was fighting. I was fighting whatever they had to fight. I just bring the best I had. 
It ain't no difference in a long hill, short hill. Or and you fight them wherever, wherever, whatever. Well, whatever they fight that day. You didn't keep. You didn't feed one different from another one. No. Le pregunto que si él. They're the same. Que si cuidaba un gallo diferente para gaf o para o para navaja o para palabras que no que todos eran lo mismo. So. Your clarity, you can fight them in gaff, spur, long day. You can fight them in gaff in any day. Okay. Because they're going to cut. How many um, chickens do you raise right now, sir? I try to raise. Uh, I had a man who was winning 25 years and he, he had his foot operated on it and uh, I lost him. So I can't find any man who get nobody to do what I want to do since then. Okay. I'm still looking for somebody. It's hard to find somebody. For help? Yeah. So you, who helps you right now with the farm? My daughter. Le puesto que quien ayuda ahorita con, con, con su, con su ayer, dice que su hija le ayuda mucho. Um, so you, your daughter's been, you know. She's a Filipino. And she, she understands chickens a little bit. Okay, good, 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 good. Are you still married? No, my wife died. Your wife passed away? Yeah, she passed away. Okay. I just got her. Okay, good, good, good. ¿Qué más tiene allá su hija ahorita? Ya su esposa se falleció. So that, that, um, that trip in the Philippines turned out good then, huh? No. <laughs> it wasn't for me. Okay. Well, you want to, um, I got a question. And I, I ask this question all, all the time to all the guys I interview. Do you think it's more, and I see this, in, especially in California and Texas, and, it, I, and I find it despicable. I mean, I, in my opinion. Que le, digo que, le, voy opinar, le voy a preguntar que yo en California y en Texas veo que, y también en, en Sanse, uno en, en, los, en los lugares, en México también, que mucha gente vende peleas. La pregunta que si está, es, es, es este correcto o no es correcto. I see this a lot in, in different places when it was legal. People buying and selling in fights. Do you think that's more or less? bad. I never would fool with all that. You, Everybody asked Harold Babcock. He used to go with me everywhere. And uh, they asked, what do I do with him? He said, he don't do nothing. He just gets out and he asks me the key and don't come back in just time to feed. Well, mm -hmm. I'm leave, trying to leave him alone and the rest. You know what I'm trying to do, so I don't go around. Dice que a lo mejor es dejar un gallo solo cuando te casas. Too much, that's bad. Dice que si le haces si hace mucho los gallos también es malo también. Okay. So you, you think buying and throwing fights is wrong? I do. Dice que sí que es, es no es correcto comprar o vender una pelea. Any kind of advice you'd like to add on to uh, for a beginner? Just always seek knowledge. Le pregunto que cuál es un consejo para un principiante y dice que, que siempre buscar buenos consejos. So you can always learn sometimes from the water boy. Dice que hasta del trabajo más bajo puedes aprender algo siempre. You just got to learn who's, got, who's making sense. Okay. Learn from the best, right? You just have to do. Que aprende de la gente que está ganando ahorita. Aprende de ellos y... y, y y este, pues siempre buscar este consejos. Ok. Well, I appreciate your time, Mr. Ray. It's been a, yeah, a great uh, pleasure. I'm glad to help you in the way I can. This is one of my bucket list, you know. I, I really wanted to see, do this interview with you, and it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Uh, compañeros, ya voy a terminar la entrevista. Muchas gracias por, por este, por uh, seguir mi página. Le repito, vamos a tener este, ya tenemos entrega inmediata ahorita. Busca, estamos buscando distribuidores ya para que calen la nueva, la nueva cero. Y le voy a repetir, si hay un que quiere hacer una competencia, les doy mucho. A ver si alguien se anima. Les doy mucho que mi niña aguanta más que cualquier otra. Compañeros, que Dios los bendiga. Y muchas gracias por seguir. Eh, recuerden, comparten el video. Y comenten, por favor, comenten, comenten y compártenlo. Muchas gracias y que Dios los bendiga.